purpose of this video is to help you better understand what are more major and more minor changes and why major changes are more major. So as you see here on the screen, you notice it's in, this is in a basement. Um, you've got a beam that's going across the top and a column that's holding it up, like you see here. Um, and we're going to go over what it would be like if we were to remove that. So on this plan here, it shows where that column is that's holding up that beam. It's spanning from the left side of the room to the right side. Here's a, a 3D cut section of that so you can see. This room is it's a pretty good sized room, but that beam and column there is to, to help hold up the floor. So if someone were to ask us if we could switch that, or to remove that beam in that column, it can be done but I'm going to go over what all needs to take place in order for that to happen. So in order to start doing that, we first have to see how far of a distance it is. The reason we do this is so we can size the floor joists properly um, to be able to, to hold the weight. So to that column, we've got um, a little over 13 feet on one side and a little over 14 feet on the other side. The reason this is important is because floor joists can only span a certain distance. So 14 feet of the TJI, half of it's going to the, the basement wall on the left, the other half's coming to the beam, and this other side here on the right, it's half of that TJI is going to the wall, and the other half is being supported by the column. Here, this is a information about the floor joists. These are called TJIs. This is what a TJI looks like if you were to cut through it. This chart here explains um, how far a TJI can span um, without being supported. So you notice on the left side of the chart, we've got nine and a half inch TJIs, and that's what is currently in the plan. The numbers on the left of the chart indicate how tall the TJI needs to be. And the numbers at the top indicate how far apart each TJI needs to be from the next TJI. And if you notice at 16 inches on center, those TJIs, if we use any of the TJIs, so the 9.5 inches, they can span a minimum of 15 feet. And if you remember, that's what we've got right here. We've got a little over 14 feet, so we can use the smallest TJIs to span that distance. But if we go ahead and remove that beam in that column, let's come back to the span chart. So we've got 24 feet. In order for that to work, we need to use an 11 and 7 eighths inch TJI and put those 12 inches on center. So you have a lot more of them. These are more expensive than the nine and a half inches, but it can be done. And comfortably, you'd probably almost want to go to a 14 inch just depending on the, the loads. So if you were to change that, if we want to keep the same headroom in the basement, we'd have to lower the basement floor. And once we lower the floor two inches, then a lot of our other details also have to change. So with the stairs, um, those are set to the specific heights of the floor and from the basement floor to the first floor. So you see here, this is a, a cut section of that here you notice in this view there's not a lot happening and so when we make this change now we would have to delete the stairs and redraw them this is a good example of a change that would be better to be made early on rather than after we've already begun the construction documents if you look at this other screen here this is another house plan that we've done and we've got the stairs drawn up already if there were changes to be made at this point, we'd have to delete the stairs, redraw them, but then we'd also have to go in and revise these dimensions um, and also these other dimensions here because um, that gives the information to the contractor so that way they know exactly how big to build the stairs. So this is but one example of of a more major and more extensive change. In our plans, when we send them out um, early on, we'll indicate which walls are the load-bearing walls. 
And that way, you know, those ones are the, the ones that are more difficult to change. So any wall that is not a load-bearing wall is a lot easier to move. And those ones we can usually move without problems. And those are pretty easy changes. We'll be sure to make that clear when you have the opportunity to make revisions early on, allowing you to keep your costs low and the amount of revisions to a minimum. So coming back to this video here, a few things that would not be considered revisions or iterations are like windows and doors if a window is too small or not big enough or you need it, the position of it changed, that's not a problem at all. Um, also door types, if you want to have a door swing a different direction or change it from just a normal flush door to a pocket door, those are easy changes. In one set of plans we had a client ask us to uh, put another door inside the, the garage so that way they can have just a normal access door to the exterior. And that's, that's also an easy, an easy change and an easy fix. I hope that from this you better understand that not all changes are easy, but there are a lot that aren't difficult to make. 